Hey, it was good, what's good, what's good? Welcome to Reflections of a DJ, the role podcast presented by DJ City and Beat Source. I'm one of your hosts, DJ Crooked. We got DJ Never here. Yo, what up? We got DJ D Miles. What up, what up? We got Jamie the Great. Yeah. Um, and yo, fellas, <laughs> what's good? Man, it's been a you minute. Know, it's been a while. A lot, is, a lot I, has happened. A I lot didn't think we happened. were going to be caught again this year. <laughs> 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 we got so many episodes in the can. I was thinking, damn, we done for 2022. Never yeah, did ask me. He's like, how long are those episodes going to last? I was like, all right, good minute. February. <laughs> talking, about that, talking about our LA episodes, right? Yeah. yeah. Hey. Our LA episodes are going to be spread out. Me and Jamie were just looking at it. Mm-hmm. Our LA episodes are going to be spread out to February. Till the end of January. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So February. About right. wow. um, I'm torn though because we have a Dre Sinatra one. Which is really good. Which is really yeah. good. And then we of- have a really funny one with Dances and D Mike B. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think Dances and D Mike B was going to be next week. Yeah. But I think we might have to hit them with Jay Sinatra. Like hit them with another LA. <sighs> They're both so good. You know what I mean? The Wild Boys was really wild that night. Yeah. But Dances and D Mike B. Dances was wilding. Yeah. I mean, he was wilding. Dances and Dances. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Um, he has so many one-liners. He's cracking us up. Yeah, but the LA episodes are going to come out, and, and you know all of them have been great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a good time. I did fuck up. I feel like we, we had Roy Choi and Dumbfounded. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think I really fucked up that episode. Nah, <laughs> no, that, no, no, I did. You hard on yourself, man. No. Hey. hey. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> no, no. Seriously, like, I did fuck that up. There's a section where we have to either... I'm, like I don't know if we're gonna edit it out or if we're gonna leave it in because it's yeah you already sent me the notes it's kind of funny yeah but yeah y'all just know when that episode comes out probably in January 2023 shout out to John Favreau <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm saying yeah I fu- I, we, we both fucked up some of the episodes I no, fucked I up fuck- with Jay Sinatra one too you did fuck up with Jay Sinatra yeah. because so, you forgot to ask the most important question because yeah because Jay Sinatra was Ray J's DJ yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah but he was Ray J's DJ while. Ray J was dating Whitney, Whitney Houston, Houston. Yeah. yeah and we didn't talk about that at all nope. yeah and I, I fucked up because I had seen that like first first hand so I forgot to bring that up I just, and then I, I got grilled by the guys for like three fucking days straight yeah but, but he ended up asking <laughs> you know what I hate with Jamie he doesn't write nothing down yo mm-hmm. he thinks his brain is like <laughs> So good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and it's 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 just not he's getting old and he's gotten COVID. <laughs> he's gotten COVID like got ele- COVID twice. Twice. COVID's <laughs> fuck rotting his brain. Yeah, man. So he asked he asked Dre Sinatra about the Whitney Houston shit <laughs> on the way out. after the fucking <laughs> yeah. episode. Why do you do that? Oh no, was a- that? no, you did that a couple times with some of the guests. No, that was an honest mistake. That was a real I forgot. Like, oh, I, so like going, I looked at him like you mother. Like, <laughs> just fin- he refinished the coin. He was like, "Yo, did you ever hang out with Whitney Houston?" I was no, like, no, "You no, motherfucker, I, what are we doing here?" <laughs> no, was, and you know what? Never always does. Never no. talks with the fucking guests, and like he just has conversations, and I mean, then all the all the gold just spills out <laughs> before the episode. It's not intentional. No, it just comes out afterwards just, too. He's like, yo, I got a question. So you you remember when this happened and this happened? He's like, yeah, I remember. I'm like, yo, Nev, we about to record. And you having this motherfucker, like he's not going to tell the story. <laughs> All the gold is just Yeah, because out. no one's going to tell the story doper the second time. Yeah, They're the going to tell one. it dope the first time. Mm-hmm. I feel Detail. like Dre, Dre going to be back on though, I feel like. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll redeem myself yeah. on that one. Well, he did tell us one thing, and I'll do, we'll put it out there, right? Uh-huh. Was that Whitney Houston? He actually smoked weed with Whitney Houston. That's kind of yeah, Ill. which was dope. That was ill. But yeah. we could have gone, you know, deeper and deeper, one hundred percent, and deep dives <laughs> in. That but we'll never get the John Favreau story back. But we know. No, I don't know. I, yo, shout out to John Favreau. Thank you for what you do for I MCU. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but when we were we were recording with Roy Choi and Dumbfounded, I was like, I was. Like I was out of my element. He's like two Koreans. No, yeah, I just didn't know how to talk to like West Coast Koreans. I well, don't know how to talk to Asian people like Koreans like that. Why is that? Man? I don't know. He felt out of place. I did. I was just like the so, whole time. So why did we have both of them on a podcast? I don't know. You should I just have one. I didn't realize because so, yo, like it's there's not many times where I don't know what to say. Yeah. Or I don't know how to keep something moving. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what to say to these to these guys. And he wasn't high. Yeah. He was nothing. Yeah. It was the first thing in the morning. And it was like, you know. But then, like, we talked to Baker Boys of Hip Hop. It's fucking three hours. It's, like, effortless. Yeah. It's, like, you know. Mm-hmm. But That's then these hip-hop. two Korean guys sit down. I'm just like, 
Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> well, when you guys hear the episode, just you'll probably notice. Like, I feel like I, was I don't even know if they'll notice. But <laughs> I think they will. <laughs> <laughs> I did because I didn't. I was like out of. That's probably the one episode I was like, yo, I was not in control. Yeah. But it, it was interesting because they were so well, like their they media, really their good, media training, yeah. their responses, they were so on. And it, you, you didn't have to say much because they were just so on and so on point. Yeah, yeah. And they elaborated on everything. Yeah, I, I got to practice speaking with Hollywood Koreans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to that. <laughs> The thing is, they were looking at me like, you're so brash uh -huh. and like raw. <laughs> and then they were just so manicured the way they spoke. Yeah. Like, the, like the polished dancers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially the John Favreau man. question. Was just like, I was like, why did you go there? No, I did. <laughs> I, the John Favreau question wasn't the problem. It was just in the middle of explaining something, I just said the wrong thing. And then <laughs> shit went left. We're probably gonna have we're gonna have to leave that in now. Though. We should, yeah, because really, I, I so. thought it was pretty bad. Sign up for a Patreon. <laughs> we'll drop it on the Patreon. Yeah. Just that one. Episode. Just that one line. Just that one, like <laughs> thirty minutes. second clip. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. You know what? We have to address something because we just had the Baker Boys episode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which was. A great episode, phenomenal. Yeah, they they were amazing. Shout so, to Eric shout and out to Nick. Them. Yeah, um, top three of my favorite episodes. So many West Coast now. motherfuckers hit me up, and you know they were just they would they love that episode. They love those guys. Those guys are such a big history uh, with LA and California. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a clip that we put out on Instagram mm -hmm. where it, I think you know the, the problem with social media, right, is that you can't really show the whole conversation. Yeah. So the clip kind of gave the impression. That you know the Baker Boys brought hip hop to New York radio, right? <laughs> yeah. So Jamie, why don't you play the uh, the clip so that everyone can hear a little bit more? Because I don't even remember how it was edited, but I'm sure I could. Like never, you would agree. The from the impression of that clip, it did sound like L. A. brought Boy, hip hop it, to hip, New York. They got hip hop to, to New, New York, York radio. radio. It did, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so the like, fact that the fact that you let you would have let that slide was hilarious that people actually thought you let that slide. I let what slide? That you said that West Coast brought hip hop to New York radio. No, no, I, I think we were talking about like specifically the nineties. Yeah. Right? Um, we saw about the nineties. We were talking about um hip hop being played twenty four seven on a radio station. I didn't know that Hot Ninety Seven became an all hip hop station. Because of what the bigger boys did in L.A. Right. And that's mm -hmm. what the clip should have. That's, that's how the clip should have been. The clip, but the clip said yeah. otherwise. Yeah, the clip said. And then all of a sudden you had DJ Scratch from EPMD. You know, Scratch, we <laughs> fucking the love legend. Scratch. Legend. <laughs> Scratch, <laughs> yes, we know it was Mr. Magic. Red Alert, all them dudes from New York started. Was on radio way before the Baker boys. We know that. Yeah. Well, let's play the clip and let's get into it. And I want to read. You guys were playing underground hip hop yeah. on commercial radio, yes. even before New York. Yeah. Yes. And you guys weren't even playing at High 97, was still a dance uh, music station when we were on the air here playing hip hop. Ice Cube, Black Moon, Cypress Hill. Really? It wasn't yeah. even playing on radio. Wu-Tang Clan. So we actually helped influence their format as well. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> the dude who, who changed everything in New York was Steve, Steve Smith. Smith, worked for Emmis. We were sent to New York. We were already on staff at Power 106. And we're like, Steve, are you playing this Wu-Tang record? Steve, are you playing this? Black Moon record. He's like, who? What? Uh -huh. well, you guys got to be playing these records now. <laughs> Why don't you hear about this stuff? Honestly, Stretch and My Beetle were probably in New York doing, doing that shit. Mm -hmm. totally. You know, before you guys. They just but weren't on commercial radio. They weren't on commercial radio. That was but the difference. All right. So that was the clip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So obviously, I, I get where these OGs, all these New York OGs got mad, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, what did Scratch say? He said, lie. Nah, he was like, Abs <laughs> no, absolutely not true. WBLS, Mr. Magic Rap Attack, 1983-84. So wait, so I'm from a different era. Mm -hmm. So 80, 80, like, I don't know, 83, 84. Okay, 83, I was, 84, it was, um, BLS had Mr. Magic, mm -hmm. um, 98.7 Kiss had Red Alert right. Chuck Chill Out. But let's let's be clear. What was what were they playing? Yeah, what were they playing throughout the day? Every okay, day? throughout the day, those stations was playing R and B music. Yeah, mm -hmm. they would probably they would might play like the hottest hip hop record at the time, which it was maybe one or two records that was hot. They would play that. Which was what? Maybe like a Run DMC song. Run DMC. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, um, yeah, they would play that. But other than that, they wasn't playing hip hop during the day. Mm -hmm. Only time they was playing hip hop was at night on the weekends, Friday and Saturdays, from nine to twelve. Now, question. Was Run DMC seen as an underground hip hop? They was on an independent label, but it wasn't on a major a, label. 
whether it seemed and more at the commercial time, hip-hop? Was, at the time, there wasn't no such thing as underground hip-hop. It was okay. just hip-hop. Well, right. you had a, you made a good point. Everyone was saying that all the hip-hop in the 80s that was getting played on the radio was underground. But it was, hip-hop itself was, it was underground. Like, it was new. It was underground. It yeah. was on independent labels. There wasn't really that many um, artists on major labels. So, like, yeah, everything was independently put out. Who played hip-hop first? Who played some of the first hip hop songs on the radio first? Was it BLS or Kiss? Be honestly, it was. It could have been like on college radio. I want to say like maybe like the Awesome Two, um, Special K, Teddy Ted. Mm-hmm. They was on eighty. Oh man, I forgot which station, but it was like eighty eight something. Right, right. And that was like a. They was like maybe one of the first DJs anything, to play. Anything video. below ninety was always. But <laughs> yeah. but, but yeah, and, and like I said, maybe then it was Redler and Chuck Chill Out was like on on Kiss FM, mm-hmm. and I. I believe Mr. Magic might have I think been he was the them. first. Yeah. I think he was the first. He, he was might the have been before them, yes. Yeah, because we always hear about them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think- And we're, also, we're, Mr. Magic was on college radio before he got on to BLS. Mm-hmm. Right. So, but where did Red Alert blow up on radio? Because wasn't he the first to start playing all the BDP kind of beef songs? I mean, because Red Alert was DJing at Union Square, which is like the was the biggest hip-hop club back in the days. Right. So that's how he got down with BDP. But Red, he was playing like- Like I said- but that's really how, like, everyone was listening to all the, because at the time, MC Shan and then was you had yeah, with yeah, Mr. Magic yeah. had Cold Chillin', which is um, MC Shan, Biz Markie, right. Kane, they was all on that label. So he was playing, like, those those joints, those exclusive joints. So it was almost like East New York versus, like, the Bronx, Manhattan, It was Harlem. like the Bronx versus Queens, something yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. East New York versus yeah. Manhattan, Uptown, Bronx, mm-hmm. Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. And those were the two radio stations. Those were the, the biggest, yeah. They was yeah. the only ones playing hip-hop on a major, la- on a major station. Right. Commercial. So then in my era of like the, the 90s, you mm-hmm. know, it was like we were, I was hearing Kid, Kid Capri mm-hmm. and Pete Rock on WBLS. Mm-hmm. And then they had like dance hall reggae nights with... Davin Lee, yeah. mm-hmm. I'm rocking you, rocking you, rocking you. Yeah. Right? And mm-hmm. then and then Red Alert was still on Kiss. Red Alert, yeah. Mm-hmm. But at that time, WBLS in the 90s, and correct me if I'm wrong, they were a little ahead of the curve than Kiss. Because like they That's had the newer one. DJs. Oh, they just they had DJs. Pete Rock, they had Kid Capri. Mm-hmm. And I think Red Alert was maybe Red the Alert only dude on Kiss was FM. holding it down. And yeah. then there was Red Alert, then he, um, he so, had Sammy so, B from the Jungle Brothers would fill in for him right. once in a while. So then like in the 90s, WBLS was like playing kind of the newer hip hop and some of the newer like kind of dance music and R&B. And that was what, Kirk? Huh? Well, that was what, like what music was that at the time that they were playing? That? I mean, still like, I'm trying to think, this was like, man, this was early like gangstar shit. They were playing that shit on WBLS. I mean, whatever was popping in the yeah. 90s, like brand new bands. Okay. Yeah. They were playing all that shit in the early nineties. Yeah, and you know, I still, mean, Red was playing that also. Was this prior? He was playing it, but but, 19, then, but 90, like, 20, like you say, Kiss had Red Alert, but BLS was trying out different DJs. They like were trying say, out the newer DJs, the newer so DJs they were playing the it like yeah. Iller, like hearing yeah. Kid Capri and Pete. They even Rock. had like Clark Kent on the yeah on the station yeah. and like doubling it up. I think Ron yeah. G was even like yeah. on mm-hmm. fucking WBLS. Yeah. And Ron G mm-hmm. was like the first mixtape DJ in New York that mm-hmm. didn't scratch. So mm-hmm. it was like a big deal. It was like like everyone either loved him or hated him, but they were just like, yo, Ron G is like, he's not a real DJ. He don't scratch. But then everyone was like, yo, but he had the dopest blends, right? Yeah. Ron G had like the illest blends. I think he was known for the remember the time Michael Jackson acapella over Check the Rhyme Trap Called Quest. Ooh, that's mm-hmm. And that like, it like blew the shit up and everyone knew yeah. he had the dopest blends. So was this before Hot 97? So yeah, so Hot 97, I don't remember when the the change happened, but Hot 97 started just becoming like all hip hop. It was the all first all hip hop radio station, yeah. right? This yeah, and this is like around I would say like 1993. Mm-hmm. So, so right like, around with the big Hot 97 cuz so before Hot 97 was hip hop, there was like a freestyle station yeah. and they played dance music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like I would, so like this is the way, like in the 90s when I was growing up, if I wanted to hear like classics, like uh, Kenny Burke or like, you know, all of that old school shit, outstanding mm-hmm. gap band, I would go to 98.7. Yeah. If I wanted to hear kind of like newer, like Tom, like, you know, Tom's Diner, some of like the newer dance shit, mm-hmm. I would go to like WBLS. Mm-hmm. And then if I wanted to hear like, like Snap, I got the power. Yeah. Or like freestyle shit, 
I would go to Hot 97. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And then you had Z100, which was playing like- It was top 40. It was like white people. It, it was, was like, playing like yeah. Mariah Carey. Just, yeah, okay. Yeah. Like um, pop, yeah, all pop the pop, pop, like, like, like pop and rock FM. music. Yeah. Bon Jovi. Yeah, super, like super white. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If they, they, they would be playing like Young MC or- Yeah. Like, or whatever, yeah. Was it, whatever was in the top 10 of Billboard at the time, they was playing it. Right. Oh, okay. But it was like everything was kind of scattered. Yeah. And it's like you had to tune in to certain mix shows to hear Pete Rock and Seal. But it wasn't like now where you go to a station, you just hear nothing but hip hop. Mm-hmm. For an hour straight. You'd have to tune in. Yeah. And imagine like all these West Indians, you would never hear a dance hall or reggae on the radio at all. Mm-hmm. So that's where D- David Leary, yeah. everyone would tune into WBLS and listen to like David Leary. And even like his saying, right, on the on the mic, rocking, rocking, you, rocking you, rocking you, rocking you, became part of like this whole like uh, dance hall reggae movement in New York. And then even like when Red, Red Chuck Chill Out and all them guys in the Bellas, when it was playing hip hop, they wasn't playing the underground hip hop. They was playing like the commercial hip hop. It wasn't until Stretch and Barbito got on the air and they started playing like the underground hip hop that nobody heard of before that wasn't on the major label. Yeah. It was like all independent. So like Wu Tang, for example, was mm-hmm. an independent yeah. fucking record. Right. So you exactly. would hear you would hear that shit mm-hmm. on fucking you would only hear it on stretching by So people. quote unquote independent would be underground. That's underground. Yeah. yeah so okay. they started becoming so like in the nineties, everyone was signed to a major. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? So, so t- let's go back to the eighties. Yeah. There was like I said, there was only a few artists that were signed to a major label. But most of the records that was being put out was independent labels. But hip hop was new, so there wasn't a so much new hip hop available at the time. But then you had Def Jam, Jive Records. Mm-hmm. Those are like the big labels. And it was still kind of underground. And then it started evolving towards the 90s. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So you had Tommy Boy. You had but Tommy Ruckus. Boys is from the um, 80s also. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What but, about but Ruckus? It, What's that? When did Ruckus come around? No, no, that no, was no, 90s. That's late 90s. Late 90s, okay. 90s, late 90s yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Late 90s. So then you had all of these like major label rappers coming out. Yeah. But then you had this complete underground scene. Mm-hmm. Now in the underground scene, that's where like Fat Beats, this record store emerged. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So Fat Beats, if you ever, ever heard of it, I couldn't go to like Rock and Soul and like there's there's just, you couldn't find these like white label bootleg artists that were selling their underground records to like Fat Beats. Mm-hmm. You couldn't find those shits at like Rock and Soul. Yeah. So you would have to go to Fat Beats to find like, you know, like the new Eminem that came out. Remember that shit, a scary movie yeah. Yeah. with mm-hmm. uh, Royce the Five Nine yeah. sure and Eminem? Records. You could only find that at Fat Beats. But even like shit like MF Doom, where he came MF out. MF Doom, yeah. When Barbito put out um, Final Them Records, that was like an independent label that mm-hmm. had um, MF Doom. Um, Lord Seal put some shit out. It was like, that was really underground. And, even, and you couldn't find that shit at um, Rock and Soul. Or no. Beat Street, or like all the big, big record stores at the time, because they were only selling what major labels were were distributing at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, like even early Jay Z, like early Jay Z Rockefeller shit, when he was on Payday Records, yeah, the, you could only find that at Fat Beats. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. So and then, but then there's just all these underground, underground New York like groups, like mm-hmm. the Arsonists. Uh, company L- flow, El Sensei, <laughs> yeah, El Sensei. You know, like you had all these underground. Shout dudes. out to Mighty My, Mighty My Eon. Oh, yeah, High and Mighty, <laughs> high and mighty yeah. yeah, like shout out to yo, that was a crazy record. Yeah, mm-hmm. but there was all these underground joints that you could not fucking find, and you had to go to Fat Beats. So it was like Fat Beats, and it was like Stretch and Bobito, mm-hmm. and that was like my world when I was growing up. Yeah. Like when I was coming, I was like the backpack hip hop. That's yeah. the Black Moon and all that shit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. So like all of that shit started just like emerging. And what's so funny about going to Fat Beats is they used to have like the promos of like the the big Jay Z Biggie records, and he, he was kind of a they kind of treat you like shit if you bought his records because it was like oh you you a fake you're not an underground hip hop head you a commercial What's your backpack you a shiny suit well like yeah <laughs> shiny suit. <laughs> Well, so like in Fat Beats, they have the underground records, mm-hmm. right? But Didn't then they have they, a wall or something like that? I mean, there's walls of records. No, but there was like a specific wall where your your shit would be at. Never mind. I, I mean, every record store has it. Every yeah, every yeah. record store has like their main wall where they highlight like the new shit in and coming. So like, okay, cool. That's when you what walk in, like there would be these handwritten like Sharpie marker signs that's like new shit or mm-hmm. like you know, like yeah. I remember when MOP, uh, how about some hardcore drop. Yeah, that was like hard. Like it was selling out all the time. Mm-hmm. That was like the biggest fucking record at the time. Yeah. Uh, but when you go to Fat Beats, they would sell. Like Fat Beats had some of the rarest albums. Yeah. Like they had the best album collection. 
Mm-hmm. I remember when I would go there, you could find Reasonable Doubt album. You could find like all of these Life After Death, like, uh, no, I'm not Life After Death, Ready to Die. You could find all these albums you couldn't find mm-hmm. for hip hop. But if you bought like some of like the regular commercial shit, like any any bad boy shit or whatever, like they would just look at they you look like, like you're, like a poser. you're like a poser. You're, you're, you're fake, corny, man. You're corny. You're whack. I was going to ask you, Rock <laughs> Kim and Eric B, was that underground or was that commercial? Eric paid Rock Kim? Well, at the time, it was. Like I said before, it wasn't really no underground hip hop. It was just hip hop at the time. It was okay. all. It was pretty much all, but it was all kind of. Underground but that was being played in commercial. That was being played. It was only, on the, only on the um, hip hop shows. Oh, it okay. wasn't playing in prime time. Mm. And you know what's the funny thing is in, in the nineties, we were calling all this all the music from five years ago old school. Yeah, and it was deemed old school. That's like when you hear old school now, everything's old like, school, right? Yeah, but that was specifically old school. So like we we would talk about slick Rick, like yo that's old school like yo and it was only like five years ago <laughs> it was only five years ago but we we were like yo respect man like we would make fun of motherfuckers like man you don't you don't know slick Rick like that's funny you don't know audio he was probably two? still in his twenties yeah, yeah. And we were like we were like you don't know audio too you don't know like you yeah. don't know painting for but you it's f- it's funny like in my era I was like the Van Dem and the Van DMC BC Boys era we used to think like Melly Mel and. And, that was and old busy school. B, that was old school, and that was like only a four or five year difference. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, "These motherfuckers are old, man." Cool Mo D, who listen to Cool Mo D? That's it's crazy. <laughs> but see, ours was different. We respected the old school a lot. Uh-huh. Like we were like, "Yo, you don't know about that. You got to know about the old school. You got to know." Yeah. Like we we talk yeah. about the shit. I mean, was, we respected the old school also, but we knew it was time to move on because they they, <laughs> they sounded the same that they did when they first came out. Like Benny Mo still going. You know what's <laughs> you know what's funny? I could relate to that because, like, in the early two thousands, when I really started getting into music, the mid nineties, early nineties was considered old school, but it was only like five years apart as mm-hmm. well. So I kind of yeah. see what you're saying. But so, like, you you know what's funny too in Fat Beats, and this is like uh, a lot of young motherfuckers don't know about this. If a new, like when new music came out, you could, you know, there was always like on the rack. They, they put it right there in front. The new music would come out. The first record on the rack was open. Mm-hmm. So you could take that record and you, and there was usually a DJ in the record store and you could give it to the DJ and they would play the record so you could hear it. Yeah. And they would skip around so you could hear the instrumental, the remix, and then he'd give it back to you and then you decide if you'd buy it or not. Mm. But those were some of the most, like nerve wracking situations because if you gave the DJ a whack record, <laughs> that's cool. They'd be like, "I'm not playing that shit." You don't know that. Take shit? Take the shit back, bro. <laughs> so there's a time there was Turntable Lab too, right? Yeah. All right, turn to, sorry, that's the Turntable Lab. There was Turntable Lab and Rockticon. Shout out to Rockticon. Uh, so Rockticon used to work at Turntable Lab, but he was notorious for shitting on people who mm-hmm. came up to him asking him dumb questions. Yeah. So they'd be like, "Yo, do you have that song?" They maybe sing like I don't know, like you know. Some George Benson or some like Give Frankie like- Beverly and Maze. Like, it's like before I let go, he's like, You don't know this? And you're a DJ? And he would like make them feel like shit. <laughs> oh, and then like, yeah. and then they, he would like embarrass them. Yeah. But then he would do this really brilliant thing. I think he would, he would embarrass them, but then he'd be like, Look, these are the records you need. And this was like smart salesmanship. Mm-hmm. He'd go and he'd pick all the records that they would need. Mm-hmm. From like, you know, if you don't have Before I Let Go, Outstanding, Rising to the Top, you know, if you don't have all of these, you know, Cameo Candy, you know, he, he like, you'd go there trying to buy one record and he'd be like, here's a 10 that you need. Here's 10 records you need. And right. then you, you feel embarrassed because you're like, I, but I got to buy this shit. Yeah. But that's what they would do. That was like the hustle <laughs> they would do. You, you, I remember one time at Rock and Soul. Do you remember there was like that one, the one gay dude who worked there? Benji. Benji. Yeah. He fucking <laughs> that screamed was the at homie, me. Man. He screamed at me. He you hated. Did? So like he hated. Like these motherfuckers would treat like if you were new, they would treat you like shit. Yeah. And I remember I I came up to him and I was waiting in line, and someone skipped or something happened. Someone skipped the line twice because they were like big DJs. Because mm-hmm. you'd wait in line to like hear. Oh my god! Remember remember trying to listen to a record at Rock and Souls? Nerve wracking. Yeah. So like there was, the, oh man, there was this turntable, right? It was a community turntable yeah. and it, it had community speakers. So everyone was listening to like, you would get like eight records. They were all open. You'd bring it to, you'd wait in line to bring it to the turntable mm-hmm. and you'd play and be like, oh, you'd make sure this is the record I want. Yeah. So then 
like you know if you were a big dj you would skip the line mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what i'm saying so like if a big dj came in like maybe five years in i would come in i would be able like ruben would let me skip the line mm-hmm. i'd be like yo i gotta go like let me hear that and he'd be like yo excuse me and he'd like cut in front of you damn what a flex and then he just dumped like 20 records he's like you want this oh yeah i want it i want it and then i just take it and then the, like these motherfuckers would just look at me like who the fuck is him right yeah so i was online and i was young and i was there was probably like six people in front of me three people cut in i was pissed yeah and you know, there's no AC in there. It's like fucking so, hot. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, damn. So when I got on, I played my first record. I was annoyed. Mm-hmm. The needle like jumped. So it was like, Grrr! and everyone was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> and then Benji was like, you, you need to calm yourself. And I'm like, nah, it was the right. Re-. He's like, nah, I saw your attitude. <laughs> damn. You Benji. need to relax. He's gotta, like, you got to be man, more flamboyant. And he was, I know. <laughs> <laughs> he was yelling at me he was yeah. just like if you ain't know if you're not gonna ask straight then you're gonna go back to the lawn and i was like damn and i was just like <laughs> but i remember just like having to like hold the needle steady yeah you're listening to shit and then when the motherfucker would play like a whack record and they'd be like listening to it too long mm-hmm. like remember motherfuckers would like play a record and they'd be like listening to it's it like, yeah you, that's enough already and the motherfuckers mm-hmm. would be like yo 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 cut that shit man like get damn. off damn <laughs> they'd be like listen to like one more chance like one more chance you'd be like yo man this ain't no listening shit like everyone know that shit get out of here like change the records shout to Benji he eventually started holding your records and stuff <laughs> oh he was the man but yeah. he, he uh, by that time he left he went to Disco Rama actually that's where he went yeah man that's such uh, a Where's that's, Benji? That, need to have someone needs to capture that era. <laughs> I know, man. Of yeah. just even shopping for records. I never knew that was a thing. Records. I yeah. know. Like What's that? playing a record and like that thing, the line skipping. Because thing. imagine yeah, you, you see a record, like let's say you've never heard, I'm, I'm trying to think, like what is. No, especially with reggae records. When yeah. reggae records used to come out, you like, you have to make sure you got the right reggae record. So you had to listen to it. That's the only time I actually listen to it. But thank goodness right. for like the compilation joints. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. The compilation shit's like saved you money. <laughs> what was that called? Reggae gold. Yeah. Yeah. Volume. Like, whatever. They were yeah. 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 Three hundred. But it was <laughs> the dope shit about the record stores was if you was a big DJ, you could just go in there and tell them what's the hottest shit, and they would just pick everything for you. So like a flex would go in there, and he would just. Yeah, I thought Fletch needed to go in there, but because I was going to ask, like, when did, <laughs> it was times when like, did when did the labels or when did the labels start servicing records to DJs? You had to be on radio for that, right? So like, if no, you, you had to be you had to be on like a at a at a known club mm-hmm. because okay. these these the 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 street teams or the promo guys that work for the labels they knew the hot clubs. Okay, and if they saw you, that's when like you know you started killing it. Mm-hmm. Man, what was his name? Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican Rob. Puerto Rican rock. From Lao Records. From Lao. Yo, Puerto Rican. <laughs> when, when these motherfuckers and, and uh, Henny from Henrock. Henrock was Bad on Boy. Bad Boy. Yeah. So when these motherfuckers started knowing you, mm-hmm. right, it was just like they would come to the club mm-hmm. and they would bring you the records. That's that's like some real. And it was like, pimp. Or, yeah. if, or like they would let you, they would actually have you come to the office and yeah. you come there and get records from there as well Shh. on and a then, Friday. Yeah. And then you would go to the bad boy offices. They'd have you come up. Yeah, and then that's they, sick. And then they'd be like, "You got this," and you could even ask for old shit. See if see if they oh, have it around. Yeah, yeah. Imagine Jamie if you had social media and you was like filming going to bad. That's boy. what Ooh. I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? That'd be pretty yeah, sick. That would be going crazy. Def, I like going to the Def Jam. Yeah, I, I never told me like. <laughs> I don't, don't, don't think I ever made it to that. Nah, it was nah. Def Jam Imagine, Universal. That yeah. was, oh my god. Uh, no, never would tell me. He's like, yo, I remember going up. Then I would see like uh, uh, Russell Simmons walking around. Yeah, see like artists walking. Around, I was like, Yo, that's crazy. I remember, like, in the 2000s before I moved to Vegas and I would go to Def Jam office, I was always see Jim Jim Brown. I mean, yeah, <laughs> Jim yeah Brown. the football player, Jim. Yo, wow, Jim Jones. That's um, cool, Jim man. Jones. Yeah, you come, you say, you Jim Jones, dip set. Santana Dipset used to be running, walking up and down the office. Yeah, <laughs> Jim Brown and Billy D. Williams. <laughs> Muhammad Ali had a good one. Having lunch with Red Man. <laughs> <laughs> Smoking a blunt. <laughs> Drinking a 40. Man, no, to me, to me, like Dipset was the biggest shit. So when mm-hmm. you tell me the stories, I'm like, damn, yeah, you yeah. just walk into an office and they're like, and walking they would, around. they would have gear, they would have tapes and CDs. Yeah, they, mm-hmm. they would just give Slip you, match, yeah, man. And they would do, the promo dudes, they just want to give you everything. They just give you whatever yeah. is there. Like, yo, yo you take got whatever this? you want. Take this, man. take this. Yo, you got this? Take this. They're yeah. like, take this. I they got you. imagine. What's your size? And they give you like hoodies, tees. t-shirts. Yeah. Damn, you would be yeah. official. Yeah, for real. You look like it's, it's, oh, it's such a great. It's such a great. Era. Yo, if there was social media at that time, that'd, that'd be, be pretty insane. sick. Yo, 
Like a vlogging, vlogging yeah. shit going through our show. Like imagine fun. like being like young going to death row. That's what I liked. The, I liked about the Kanye fucking documentary. It just showed the behind the scenes shit that you never thought you would have seen. And yeah. shit. That's why I enjoyed about that documentary. But anyway, we, we were talking about New York radio. radio? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so, we, we understand the OG New York motherfuckers getting mad at us. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but they they didn't listen to the whole episode. They but just they're got not mad going to. No one's going clip. to. <laughs> Off of that clip. And I put a good timestamp for you guys on there. So go ahead and go find the timestamp. <laughs> it's funny because when I see Scratch like commenting, I'm like, of course Scratch is gonna say something. Yeah. Scratch is like. But the, the Baker dude. Boys point was they helped change the f- station's format. Right. To all yeah. Hip-hop. To flip yeah. it basically. Yeah. The, and that was their influence. And the, the thing is this: like when I was working with Alex, the editor, mm-hmm. like I knew that this was very vague. And I knew it would have maybe gotten misinterpreted. But I also think it's cool to have this conversation. Yeah, 100%. And it's like, it's cool to hear these OGs tell their stories and talk about New York and all that. And have them get their flowers. And and by the way, I would love to have Scratch on the podcast. We would love it. And talk with him. Yeah. (laughs) Somebody clip this and send it to him. It's like, you know, nowadays it's like an honor to get checked by yeah, an OG yeah. Yeah, scratch, man. you know. So we appreciate that scratch, yes. trying to get the record straight. And shout out to everybody that comment. Like Sir Charles was commenting, he was putting a lot. Yeah, we there. need to get Sir Charles on the yeah. podcast, yeah, for sure. Shout out to Franzen also said that Sway and Tech. Actually, yeah. So Franzen was saying that Sway and Tech was playing hip hop on before. commercial radio before Baker Boys. Yeah. And uh, in the Bay I don't, area. I don't know what was going oh. on in the Bay Area though. Yeah, we might have to have. Talk to friends because my recollection of Sway and King Tech with the um the Wake Up Show was through syndication because that show was syndicated from the Bay into L.A. on the weekends. So all I knew was what I heard for that one or two hours on syndication. I don't know if it was a regular thing like outside of that in the Bay, but I don't think it was. I think it was literally like Neville was saying. It was just like might have been a station that I want to play one format in other times, but for that two to four hours on a Saturday, Friday Saturday night, mm-hmm. it was hip hop. So I don't think it was like continuous like a hip hop format all the time. Just and that's just from what I remember in my recollection of it. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily what that's what it was. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, I I'm down to talk to friends and about it yeah. and get more about it. But I, I you look, when when these things go out on social media and these conversations happen and these OGs get upset or like you know they voice their opinions on shit, I I you know, I I think it's a good thing. Mm-hmm. As long as they understand that look, we we're, we're open to being corrected and to getting the history right and yeah. talking about yeah. it. Yeah. You, but it's like we're not maliciously trying to make claims on other shit. Mm-hmm. We're just talking and some, sometimes we'll forget, you know what I'm saying, to clarify, clarify what we everything. Do. It's yeah. like yeah. sometimes it's like we want to talk about one thing and I don't want to talk about 80,000 things that are connected to it just to get the story right. right. Mm-hmm. So we have to just keep it moving. And what yeah. we're trying to do with the Baker Boys is just give them a platform because no one like outside of LA probably knew their history and everything they've done and even for New York. Radio but I think show. that's crazy though. I mean, when you think about it, for them to have a radio show, a hip hop radio show in LA, right? Have it be so influential and impactful that New York is going to follow, like an actual station is going to follow. And to this day, that station is still hip hop. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. it turned hip hop and it's st- and it's like the voice, the voice of hip hop in New York. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, so I give it to the bigger boys. I mean, Flex them- has been on there for like 20 plus years, just dropping yeah. bombs yeah, and new records. Since and it started. Yeah. 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 It's, it's kind of like I give it to the bigger boys. Like, talk your shit. Like, I get why you think, you know, like why you guys are feeling like, you guys made a difference because you did. Like you yeah. actually like affected some New York shit, mm-hmm. which is surprising to me and never. You know what's funny? <laughs> yeah. Next year, next year will be thirty years that they did that. So think about it. What they did thirty years ago, still influential. Wow. Now. Yeah, it's crazy. But I'm glad we uh, we cleared that shit up. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot to talk about, so I don't I don't know what we want to get into. But let's talk about something personal with Never. Got hit about damn yeah. big time over here. Yeah, they they <laughs> they hit me up. Got an email from them saying that they was interested. In, um, went to know was I playing? Was Vegas DJs playing Kanye West in the clubs after everything that went down? So Kanye West, you know, in typical behavior, has been going ham on social media, and he was on Drink Champs. Yeah, mm-hmm. talking about George Floyd, talking about saying anti-Semitic shit. It blew up. Basically, he lost what his Adidas deal. Mm-hmm. He, he lost, lost Gap. every Gap. deal. He lost what his distribution deal. He did lose his distribution. But I feel like good music haven't been putting anything out in years. So, well, what's his album? Isn't that good music? Isn't that good music for him independently? But as like 
as a whole label with different artists, I don't think only other person that was on good music is um, Pusha T. And Tiana Taylor? Yeah. yeah. Tiana Taylor, Pusha but, T. But other than that, on. it wasn't really nobody else coming out. I mean, Pusha T is... It's kind yeah, he's of, a president yeah. of good music, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but other than that, it wasn't like they wasn't really putting anything. He lost out. his. He lost his school. A school, uh, Donda Academy. And if Fifty uh, Cent's gonna help with that or something, I don't know. But they he, was talking about also, getting, uh, doing something together. A, a couple of huge athletes that were uh, represented by Donda Sports, right? They yeah. left, which mm-hmm. was uh, Aaron Donald from the Los Angeles Rams. Yeah, Jalen Brown from the, from the Boston Celtics. Right, he lost his billionaire status. Yeah. He's now yeah. like yeah. worth three hundred, four hundred million something. Mm-hmm. Not only um, that, he lost a lot of silhouettes from his Adidas deal that now Adidas owns that can be released. I, I read that he he still owns the rights to the slides. Yeah, but and, he doesn't uh, own. He shit. doesn't own the rights to like the three fifty, five fifty, which is the, yeah. the big uh, selling ones. Mm-hmm. You know, the thing with with Kanye, and we'll talk about. You know, uh, there's been DJs on Twitter saying they they don't they haven't been playing his music. They mm-hmm. you know they put it in the category of R. Kelly and yeah, all these other artists they're not playing. Even MJ, I don't know. Some of them are still not playing MJ mm-hmm. or whatever like that. So they hit me up. They sent me an email asking if I be down to do a Zoom with them right. and they had some questions for me. I would have told you don't do a Zoom. So check it out. I was ready to do it. I was sitting there waiting for them to get the the, um, the Zoom link. The Zoom link. But they never got back to me. Damn, so, you, should, you trying to get clout off of fucking Kanye right now? Yeah. No, I was wow. just like... You're going to put another black man down? <laughs> no, I thought it would be harmless, whatever. So then, as I'm waiting for them, to Yo, Nev, did you back. did you like did you get any consultation or advice like any? <laughs> nah, the funny thing is, um, I had told Moma, and he was just like, "I'll leave that alone, man." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was gonna do this shit. So I'm waiting for the Zoom to link up, and then never went through. And I has I had to like do something at the time. So I was like, I sent them the email. I was like, "Yo, we didn't link up with the Zoom." Can we postpone it or do it another time? Yeah. So they was like, well, you could email us your answers to the question we have for you. So they sent me a couple of questions. What are the questions? The first one was, when did DJ start noticing it was awkward to play Kanye in a club or a party setting? All right, that's easy, right? Yeah, it was easy question. Recently. Well, well let's answer it. When was the No, first no, here's time? the thing. So right. after the Zoom didn't go through and I got these questions... I started thinking about it. Yeah. And I was thinking, you know what? If I was to answer, if I was to tell them to not I'm stop playing Kanye because of what's going on, I would have people getting mad at me. It's like, yo, you fucking sell out. How you going to diss that, diss a black man like that? But if I was to tell them, yo, I still play Kanye, I would have people coming at me like, yo, you fucking racist motherfucker. So damn if you do, damn if you don't. And I thought about it. I was just like, I, I didn't get back to Before we to, move on. To them. How, what, so, what Kanye songs were you guys really playing? Shit, I mean, there's a few. You know what? <laughs> yeah. early, early in the night, there was a, yeah, yeah Gold I, Digger. I, gold Digger. I was still playing Believe What I Say. Okay. Um, Father, I, Father I, Stretch My Hands. That's a big one. I love it. I yeah. mean, Father Stretch My Hands got to be one of the biggest songs of yes. the night. Yeah, yeah. It's a huge anyway. record. Yeah. But then you got like Good Life, which is, yeah. you know, okay, like towards game. the middle or the end of the night. The end of the night. Flashing Lights. Flashing Lights, yeah. Fade, I'll play Fade. Fade. Yeah. Even the even the Highlights. Lauren Hill joint, All Falls Down was having a crazy run. Yeah, it was having like another resurgence, yeah. especially right. after the documentary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. on Netflix. So we were playing about ten Kanye so, songs. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so their first question, right? Mm-hmm. When did you? Uh, when did we? When did it become uncomfortable to start playing Kanye? It has to be the MAGA hat. Yeah, it had to be when he was back in. That was. Front. I, feel, I feel like DJs were still playing Kanye. Wow, the, man, there, there was a wait, 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 wait. Twenty sixteen. So November. for me, there was a there was a, a period where I questioned it, where I was like, I don't know, because of that MAGA situation, mm-hmm. right? He's wearing the MAGA hat, and then he was remember he was on um, TMZ. He, TMZ. He was saying that when he showed up. That's, okay, that yeah, was the beginning. Yeah. I started questioning all this Kanye shit. Right, Should I be slavery playing was music? a choice, and yeah. stuff like that. Right, and right. that kind of died out. Right, but what really <laughs> did it was after that Drink Champ episode I recently. Recently, I was just like, yo. Is it safe to play Kanye in the clubs? Because you know, right? You don't know who's gonna be in the fucking club. It could be our owner, the owner's family mm-hmm. friend or business partner, and they they tell the owner, "Yo, why is this DJ playing Kanye West?" And then I could lose my job for playing Kanye West. Yeah. So I mean, it's a scary situation. I feel like if a club has issues like that, they should notify the DJs yeah. in advance. Yeah, I agree. Right? So what was the second question? Then? All right. The second question was. Um, are they going to keep playing Kanye in the clubs? No. Are the DJs going to keep playing Kanye in the clubs? Are you guys playing it? 
nope. at the moment, no. Nope. I've taken nope. a break from when it when it nope. first happened. I was questioning it, but I would still play it just to test it, and it was still going off. Now I just don't feel right, like morally. Now, like now, I'm like, okay, this is. I feel like I'm poking the bear a little bit if I'm playing Kanye, right? Like I'm just trying to get a reaction from someone or agitate someone, and I don't even want to go down that road, so I just stay away. You know what's funny? <laughs> this past week, me and Jamie both uh, DJ at a convention, um, a pretty big convention here in Vegas, and um, I was just noticing, you know, there was a lot of walking going on. So I, I just, I purposely was just seeing who was wearing Yeezys. There's a, a lot, lot, a lot of, of motherfuckers people. wearing Yeezys. No, you know what's so funny? After everything that went down, a few of the clubs I went to, I did hear DJs playing Kanye West. And I was like kind of shocked. I'm like, wow, you really playing it? <laughs> well, here's the thing. Like, how many times, how many artists are we going to cancel and not play their music and then play their music, mm-hmm. but then not know that there's like hundreds or thousands of other artists that have done horrible shit to people? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it just hasn't come out yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. behind closed doors. Like, to me, Rick James is one of the most, he's done one of the most vile things ever, which is like kidnap, like, a, a young girl and force her to smoke crack S- force her to smoke crack and also like commit sexual acts yeah That's like him her. and his girl raped a fucking young chick yeah and like kidnapped her and held her hostage like what is worse than that yeah and meanwhile the biggest song right now in top 40 is a Nicki Minaj song sampling Rick James right mm-hmm. so like where where is the fucking balance for everything yeah. Yeah. do you know what I'm saying like it mm-hmm. doesn't make sense sometimes yeah. yeah it's nonsensical and it's like it's topical it's trendy it's just like yo james almost, brown was known for beating his girlfriends and wives but yet he's a legend and people still play his music i mean if we go down the line there's a lot of shit yeah my yeah. question is is this only happens in minority communities where we shun people away because we've seen uh white folks do some crazy shit on tv like uh, Sarah Silverman did blackface, but since I guess the white community never addressed it, it just got swept and got left alone. Is it bad that minorities kind of put this guy in a bubble and kind of like just, you know, go at him? Does that make the situation worse? I mean, the it comes down to like money and like markets, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So who controls what markets and who's behind the money? Are there black markets or... Uh, that can ban Sarah Silverman from no. like entering and no. have it affect her livelihood. No, no. So th- those are the things, you know. Like, what products, what companies, what corporations, you know, have black owners with black followings, or that is that have the power to cancel somebody that's white. Mm-hmm. Well, like w- one of our first <clears throat> episodes, right? I think is it's called Black Groceries. Black Groceries. Yeah, it's called Black Groceries, right? This is yeah. four years ago. Yeah. yeah. So, like, we talked about, you know, like any neighborhood you go to, if you go to Asian neighborhood, there's an Asian market, right? Uh, you know, a Latin Mexican neighborhood, there's a Mexican market. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Puerto Rican bodegas, right? Yeah. Dominican, every, but when you go to a black neighborhood, there's no black groceries. Mm-hmm. There's no black markets in there. Yeah. There's no ownership in there, do you know? And it's, it's, it's a little odd. Mm-hmm. So like when I look at Kanye, right? And he's just dependent on white corporations for resources, for, for everything. And trying to be accepted by them too. Well, it's like, yo, like, you know, if you're creating a product and you're having it developed and manufactured by Adidas or Gap or whatever or Balenciaga's helping with this. If you're using all of these white corporations to help, you know, yeah. manufacture and make your product, you know, they're gonna who who's gonna have the ownership for that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the biggest problem with the Yeezys that I'm having right now is that look, like manufacturing takes development time. Mm-hmm. They're sampling, you know, like especially when you have something like the ultra boost technology. That's not something you could duplicate. Right. And that's the main thing that was selling Yeezys is comfort. ultra boost technology. Mm-hmm. Comfort. So when Yeezy comes out, where is he going to get that technology? Yeah. It took like years for Adidas to streamline ultra boost and to get the factories to be able to produce that on like a, like a mass production level mm-hmm. where they could just churn out ultra boost and 350s and you know all of these sneakers. I mean, I don't, I don't know about his newer sneakers, like the the Wave Runners. Yeah, 
those I, have those have uh, those have ultra boost. Ultra boost yeah. So the, my whole thing is like that technology isn't his. Mm -hmm. His designs are insane. You know the way he markets and you know it's, it's no question that he's a genius with like what? design and marketing. Yeah. But he popularized uh, ultra boost. He did. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. they were out before him. But the mm -hmm. thing is that technology is. It was rare at the time. Mm -hmm. Like, you didn't have comfort like that on yeah. a sneaker with anything. Even to this day, like, w you know, when you see motherfuckers walking around, everyone's walking around in ultra boosts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and from any age. It's like, it, if you're 60 years old or 50, you're wearing ultra boosts yeah. because those are more comfortable than anything. I'm about to say, now. they're still most comfortable sneakers. Yeah. Out of the right. Head. Especially, like, in our industry, I see, like, you know, mad people that are on their feet constantly mm -hmm. wearing ultra yeah. boosts. I actually thought about going to buy some ultra boosts not long ago. <laughs> because, yeah. Bro. But the, the problem is, is like, yo, if he doesn't have that technology, can he really just develop another... I mean, when Another he was in like when that. he was in Nike, he was using the air bubble, and it wasn't as comfortable. But I'm sure he can figure something out. But to the way that he did with Yeezy and Adidas, it's gonna be very fucking hard to duplicate. Yeah, it's just hard. Like you know, like what would have been smart for him was to develop something on the side slowly, which I think he's doing. Mm -hmm. I think he is developing. He's not like a stupid dude. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think he's developing something on the side. But when your manufacturing and your production and your resources are all relying on all these other companies. Mm. You got to watch what the fuck you say. Yeah. Yeah. And no matter how much money you're making or how much you're producing, you got to watch what the fuck you say. Because in the end, everyone can shut all of his resources off. Yeah. And it's they, very, they did. <laughs> yeah. It's very fucking different from like a Dave Chappelle. Yeah, he has no corporate interest. He has one corporate interest, which is Netflix. Netflix. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you look at a Louis C.K., Louis C.K. is literally selling shit. You know, Louis C.K. got canceled, right? Mm -hmm. He was Me too mm -hmm. But he has, he's like in charge of his distribution. He actually bought the rights to his show from uh, FX, mm -hmm. Louis. I didn't know that. And he's selling it on his site. He just dropped another special and it's all through his site. Everything is going direct to consumer to him. Mm-hmm. DTC, it's a very important, that's a very important language right now. DTC, direct to consumer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to worry about a distributor. You don't have to worry about nothing. Mm -hmm. The problem with Kanye is when you're making product and you have, you're using a company's resources like this, mm -hmm. it, it, you, you can't just like move on and distribute yourself. Yeah. You, you have to find manufacturers. You have to find factories that are going to work with you. You got to start all over again. Well, I don't know if he has to start all over again, you know, but... Well, he doesn't own a lot of the rights to those uh, Yeezy models. Kirk. I mean, that's another thing that I don't understand. Like, why would you launch a brand and have no ownership? I think it's like yeah. eight models that he doesn't own. I think he owns one of, like, all of his models. He that's owns he owns the slide and he also owns the uh you know that that uh the one joint without without the laces the just the slide the uh, the slip oh yeah ends. the waffle looking thing yeah he owns those two I think he owns that too because he developed that foam technology for mm -hmm. those slides yeah because that was something we never seen before yeah. no definitely not so the thing is is like look Kanye can do look I don't know how much development time those foams took or whatever but usually in in production with clothing shoes or anything it's eight months to a year. Yeah. So if I have a design or anything, it takes like two months or three months to get a sample. You make revisions. Two months later, you get another sample. By the time you perfected a product, it may have been six to eight months. Yeah. And then you got to go into production right. for like actual sales. And, and then that's another two to three months. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like it's, it's everything takes eight months to a year. Mm -hmm. So for him, I don't know what he was doing. I don't know what his intentions were. I like to think that he isn't anti-Semitic, yeah. that he's more reckless, miseducated, mm -hmm. and you know, just L ignorant. A little ignorant. Just, just I'm a little ignorant. I mean, he's just like, <laughs> he's just a walking body of ignorance, yeah. man. And uh, we'd like to think he's not racist. Yeah. Uh, I just think he just says dumb shit, and I don't, I don't think you know. But it's fucked up that he has nobody in his camp to like tell him to chill the fuck out or shut up. Well, did you notice that he always says like I don't I I hire young people. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. hire any like old motherfuckers. Don't old, to old motherfuckers people. don't have ideas. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but old motherfuckers know about business. Exactly. Well, that's what you uh, understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Like young motherfuckers know about creation. Like, well, they they know about what's relevant. What's setting setting what's, the trends? What's what's pop happening right now? Yeah. But they don't understand how business and relationships work mm -hmm. on a long term mm -hmm. 
scale. Exactly. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And usually OGs and people who have been in business 15, 20 years, they, they, those are the people that Kanye thinks is trying to control him, but they're actually trying to help him. Yeah. yeah. But it, when you create, like you said, when you create a company and, you know, where like no one is going to tell you no <laughs> or you're wrong or like don't go this way, let's go this option. Mm-hmm. You're going to end up where he is right now. Well, what's his name? He just came out and said that Sway was right when he said when Sway tried to give him the advice of going a smaller scale and starting there and making it his own and stuff like that back in the day. Well, he's saying to do the development himself. Yeah, and start small. And then he's like, you ain't got the answers back then when that shit happened. And now he's like, yo, Sway was right. I should have done everything in a smaller scale, build it myself, and I would have the ownership to everything. It's true, but it's, it's one of those things, too, though, if he didn't do it his way and go to Adidas, it wouldn't be what it, yeah. It would have taken fucking 10 years, maybe. Yeah. And I think yeah, he was coming off, not to cut you off, but he was coming off Nike. He, he, he needed to make a splash, right? Like coming out of Nike, like it was important for him to like surpass something that he did at Nike. And maybe he got that infrastructure and platform through Adidas. Oh, of course. He got right? a yeah, major check, I think, what he got. But the thing is, like, yeah. What he wasn't think, thinking along those terms. It would have taken you 10 time. years to build something, which the 10-year mark of that clip came out it's about to be next year. It would have taken him to to this day to kind of get where he was going to be at, but he wouldn't lose it in seconds the way he did. The, th- the thing is, like, he was in debt. He was in major debt at that time, mm-hmm. and he aligned with a company that believed in him. Mm-hmm. They, it was perfect timing. They had Ultra Boost technology. You know, and they needed the right person to kind of market and design and mm-hmm. and push it forward. They did. He became a billionaire. He proved his point, right? And he's lost everything now, but it still remains that he was a billionaire and he changed the industry, the footwear industry, the clothing yeah. industry, fashion, fashion industry with with his with the Yeezy company. Yeah. So like, if he took his time, he, he, I. I I don't know if he would be as valuable as he is now mm-hmm. or was before he talked all this shit right. and said everything else. But it's like he had to kind of do that to get to where he is and become a billion. Because you, I, honestly, man, when he was talking all this shit and was leaving Nike, I wouldn't even have, I wouldn't have imagined that Yeezy would have been this expansive. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of silhouettes. Oh, no. The amount of silhouettes it's that like he 10. created. Mm hmm. Like and and changed literally changed footwear. Yeah. yeah. Like he changed slides. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Slides is like an everyday like. Oh yeah, it's everywhere. It's everywhere now. It's not just like it's not like an it's not just an athletic thing to wear slides anymore. Like you see it in all in all forms of fashion, which is crazy. And he just he did a he did a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? But it's just a sh- it's a fucking shame, man. I don't is. is he worthy? Like, cause I'm I'm just curious how this is gonna pan out long term with his music. How I mean, how much of his new music have y'all been playing though? From Donda, I haven't been playing anything from Donda. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it's mostly like mostly like the feel just the just the joint the Lauryn Hill joint that he sampled. Yeah, off of, um, yeah, but they, I don't I don't think he's making much money off of his music. Yeah, no. oh no, it's no. just the creative outlet for him. I don't think yeah. a lot of artists. Are I don't think that's it. the problem for him. I think the problem right now is product. Yeah, but as far as his music, like what is the future? I don't like it. I don't know what he can do to like, you know, come back. Let's yeah. come think, back with Jay Z. Watch it though. Jay Z is not. Two. He's staying away from. <laughs> I mean, that. shit. The, a year ago, he was supposed to headline Coachella. <laughs> like, he's gone from that to no one wants to even deal with him at all. Like, that's a huge drop off. Well, Coachella. What's the other the rap one? The rap uh, festival. Um, um, Rolling. Rolling Loud. Loud. Yeah. yeah. Everybody drops him. I the thing I've been seeing on Twitter is that a lot of like black people are saying. He said a lot of fucked up shit about black people. About slavery. Slavery, George Floyd. Yeah. And he didn't lose anything. Mm-hmm. But as soon as he talked about, you know, said anything anti-Semitic, he lost everything. Yeah. I, I really, I can't really, I can't call it, man. Mm-hmm. I can't, I don't understand it. It's, I think it's crazy that, I don't know, when did this Michael Jackson and R. Kelly shit, we were talking about 2019. This a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's still a problem to this day. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't, I don't even think about I don't even think twice about playing Michael Jackson right now. Like if I if, if I'm feeling, it, I'm playing it. Oh, I'm playing Michael. Yeah, R. Kelly. Yeah, but it was still, weird. You you felt there was a weird. time I, well, at I that got, time. Yeah. I got in trouble for that. Yeah, I got in trouble because I played uh, Jackson Five. Uh, yeah. I want you, whatever. I want you back. I want you back. I mean, and if anyone's okay to play, 
it's little Michael. Yeah, but even then, I got <laughs> in trouble. And, and, and even you think when little I, Michael was touching motherfuckers <laughs> and like fucking with people back then? Yeah, he was innocent. <laughs> was um, there any other questions? Uh, what do they do with a catalog like his? Or what do DJs do with the Kanye catalog that they have? If they can't play it. Yeah. So, like, really thinks that it's over for Kanye. I don't, so think, those they, I don't think it's over, but I think they... Do you think it's over for him? Honestly, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. I don't think so. I feel like people thought it was over for him with the MAGA situation. Exactly. And then he just bounced back. He had a good run with Donda. Like, people started posting his music on TikTok and Instagram. It was everywhere. He won a Grammy for Donda. Yeah, like, he, he <laughs> bounced back. I feel like our country has a very short memory. And if he if he pops off in some other way or, you know, whatever, comes out with more music or some crazy shoe design and everyone's feeling it, it's just, everyone has a short memory again. Mm -hmm. It's it's funny, like, like there's always this, I have this conversation with a lot of people, there's likability versus ability. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you don't have the ability and you have likability, you'll go far in this, you know, in any industry, <laughs> yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But if you have the ability... But you don't have the likability. Yeah, you know you can either really be successful, but you have your ability must be like phenomenal, phenomenal yeah. ability. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cricket calls it failing up. Yeah. yeah, that's what he calls it. <laughs> well, no, no. If you have the ability, you're not failing up. No, no, no. The likability. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people who are likable that have no ability, like I get it. Yeah. Like you know, like there's there's good energy. People sometimes bring good energy to shit. You know. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's like we can't live off of good energy. You know what right. I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't make shit happen off of good energy. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's like, you know, ability is important. And I think with Kanye, there's ability. Yeah. But his likability is like up and down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like you said, you know, we, the fact that he has this ability, we know that this ability might bring him back. Mm hmm. But the question is, I don't know. From those questions, they nope. think it's a wrap from his catalog. They're asking like it's it's it's. The what do you end. do with it? Yeah. What do you like? What do you mean? What I'm gonna I'm do take it out of my laptop? <laughs> I'm gonna erase all his music. I'm gonna put all the MP3s on a, a USB flash store it. on a stick and just like burn it. Yeah. Like they burn jerseys and shit on social media. <laughs> like they were burning, uh, rolling over the bulldozer with the NWA tapes. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there, some some people were burning his Yeezys, right? I oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I saw that that a couple lot. of days. That's, that's, <laughs> they've been doing that for a long time. Ah oh, man, yeah. I, yo. So before we end this, we we got to give a big rest in peace, right? Yeah, uh, a big rest in peace to take off from the Migos. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, I Dude, you know, I was, didn't realize he was so young. Yeah, because they no, they came out. I remember them what 2011, 12. So they must have been like 17, 18 years old when they started popping. No, he came out at 18. 18, in 2013. So I, I thought for sure he was in his 30s, man. Yeah, God man. bless him, bro. He was only 28 years old. You know what's the crazy shit is that him and Quavo have been dropping some really good music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just feel like people have taken the Migos for granted. Yeah. Like their music is fucking good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One thousand. I and know. Yeah. Their flow is. I'm crazy. guilty. They, I'm guilty of that also, man. Their like, flow I, literally. I've been listening to a lot of Migos after Takeoff passing. And I'm just like, damn, these. Well, Takeoff was like the butt of the joke because he wasn't shining like the other two. But but he was nicer than no, both he was, of them. Yo, he, <laughs> if you guys go back to Culture 3 and the song Avalanche, he uh -huh. put on a clinic in that song. Mm -hmm. so. Well, the, the, the problem was is that viral clip with academics and Joe Buttons, when they were interviewing him at, I don't know, Complex Con or BT, I don't, yeah, BT, BT Awards, Awards, and it was yeah. like, you know, you know, what is it? Like, do I look like I'm left off bad? Yeah, the bougie, answer was he right? left off bad yeah. and bougie. Yeah. So like, it, it became this butt of the joke because he wasn't on bad and bougie. Yeah. Um, but I think like the new music. If you hear some of the the flows from like the new music with him and Quavo, mm -hmm. it's fucking good. Yeah. And it like it's like it's way better than some of the music that's out right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but their catalog, man, I was looking through it. Yeah. It's fucking insane. It is. I mean, Stark. they changed yeah. like the rap industry really, like with their flow. Yeah. Like there's so many rappers that came behind them that took from their flow or maybe tried to emulate that flow. And like I think uh not to bring up Kanye again, but even on the first drink champs, he said something about like adding to the algorithm of hip hop. And he mentioned Migos and how like they added a flow and how like certain sure. artists like future added a flow, right? Like Lil Baby added a, to the algorithm. They they were a big part from like 2012 to like when Bad and Bougie came out 2016. Like mm -hmm. that was that was huge. 
Like, yeah. I mean, they I were think, killing H- Hannah Montana, even yeah. before that. Versace Handsome was crazy. And wealthy. Versace was bananas, bro. Versace was crazy. Yeah, yeah. Fight night. At a time <laughs> when Versace was not even popping. Yeah, like, stir yeah. fry. No, yeah. <laughs> stir fry? Yeah. Really? <laughs> I like stir fry. Stir I mean, fry was the beginning of the end to me. No, I, I think it was right there. Even the stuff they did with Calvin Harris, like well, Slide. It, yeah, like that that was a see, huge to record. me, these are these are like the beginning of the end for like when people were kind of thinking they were maybe oversaturated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing is, bad and bougie, and then it's fucking uh, stir fry. So it's kind of a big yeah. like you, you you can't really top that. I knew it, maybe there was a problem when they started making songs over ninety BPM. I'm like, yo, yeah. you making you making nah, music they, over ninety BPM? I mean, Pure Water was kind of popping. Fight Night yeah, was, it was a big, pretty Fight big. Night was yeah. a big record. Fight Night, yeah, huge, Fight record. Was a huge record. I mean, even some of their other joints like T shirt. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I get the bag. Yeah. Get Wait the bag is Gucci Mane. Man. Crazy. Motor T shirt was Motor crazy. Sport. Bro. Right with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm not even mad at Ice. What is it? Ice Tray? Whatever that yeah. fucking song. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, which, <laughs> yeah. Was, which was maybe the, one of their worst the Q, songs. The QC joint? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Motorsport. Yeah, they had good ones. Man, it was, it was I, crazy. I remember I got a chance. I saw them one time, and they opened up for Drake on the Scorpion tour. And it was amazing, bro. Like, they came out to Handsome and Wealthy. But they're not the best performers. They're not. Nah, but they're not the craziest performers. They're not. Their their energy didn't match the music, but right. the music itself was just with the theatrics for like they had like fire and just it was it was a lot, man. But their energy was always very mellow on stage. I mean, their ad libs are gonna live forever. Yeah. It's just tragic the way takeoff passed. Yeah. yeah. It's just like and then all this like the way it was put on the internet. Mm-hmm. And there's all this video footage that we have, and yeah. everyone's chiming and in. All on the everything. theories. I don't. I don't know. Crazy what's going man. On, Rest man. in peace, man. Nonetheless, it's like a lot of people are passing away, man. Yeah. yeah. I got a question for you guys. This I don't know if this is appropriate to ask, but when say a friend or family or whatever member dies, mm-hmm. do you keep your dead phone number in your phone, or say if you know someone that's on that passed away, a friend of yours that's on Instagram, do you still follow them or you unfollow them? Jesus, that's tough. Um, what do you mean that's tough? Why would like, you, you know, want to follow it's not, it's not. It's not tough, but I, I think it's tough um, when I come across it. It is because you know I, I, mean? I recently came across. I was going through my Instagram and I came across like a, a page of a friend of mine that passed away, and I was thinking, damn man, and it's just like, but why would you want to follow? I don't know. Well, they didn't. I don't know. That's what I'm asking. <laughs> would you follow? Because they can't like your pictures anymore. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's, that's, off that's, follow why, account? that's why I'm asking this question. <laughs> what if you just started seeing fire but, emoji but even, comments? I mean, but, 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 <laughs> but I'm about to say that. Say someone you know passed away. That'd be and pretty you, scary. And, you, and you, they phone them a pop up on your phone. It's like, yo, what the fuck? I mean, nah. why would you delete their phone? I feel like you. I want to keep like the our our my, you know the history chat mm-hmm. like the, yeah. the messages. I wouldn't. I would want to keep that and yeah. see what we were talking about. Mm-hmm. I don't want to keep it everything. Because I, I still have my... Um, Why, you wanted to unfollow? No, no, no. I'm about to say the phone number. I still have... I uh, came across my mom's phone number, my house phone number from when I'm growing up, and I still yeah, have yeah. it on my phone, but there's nobody there. But And it was like, do I get rid of it or do I leave it? And it's just like... You know what's crazy is I uh, I have I still have followed my grandfather on Facebook, mm-hmm. and then like I'll, I'll post stuff, right? And then like for like a couple of weeks straight, I was getting responses... <laughs> See? From my grandfather's Facebook, and I was like shaking, like I was like really shook up. So I wow. called my grandmother almost in tears, and she's like, "Oh, I've got to tell you, I had access." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Yo, why you didn't tell me this? I'm over here like hysterical, like not He's even alive. knowing what's going on." She's like, "Oh yeah, I have access to it. I like, like I like your pictures. That's some his- scary <laughs> shit." Yeah, <laughs> from his Facebook. I was like, "Fuck." <laughs> Wasn't there someone who recently passed, and someone took over the IG or their Twitter? And they were like posting shit, but they already passed. No way. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it was in politics or something, right? No, no, no. Um, who's oh man? Who's the the um the the photographer that passed last? Shimo do? Um, no, 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 no. Um, did he pass? Ricky, Ricky Powell. Ricky Powell. Yeah, like his friends or whatever. They took over his um Instagram and they was posting stuff after he died, like trying to market is, or sell shit. I don't know, just no, nah, not really. But they was just like posting on his Instagram. But it was kind of scary because I'm like, yo, who's doing this? But it was them. It was like I guess good friends of his. They they want to keep his memories alive, so they would still post the shit on Instagram. Yeah. What What would you want? Would you want like one of us to take over your Instagram and post old no. pictures? No. Like once in a while. <laughs> no. Like some I mean, old videos of you killing it or something. 
I mean, maybe post it on your Instagram, but don't take over my Instagram. And I would want one last <laughs> post because right. even like AM Instagrams is still. Going. Well, that was the AM wasn't alive. He died in 09. Instagram came around in 2012. Yeah, AM doesn't have an Instagram. Yeah, it wasn't he has a his? Twitter. No, but D- he has a DJ a, AM lives is like is was, it's like was Kevin oh, Scott. Okay, and, that's yeah. okay. Oh, that's right. from like the movie. And oh, shit. okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. like yeah, Kevin Scott runs that, right? Yeah, I think Kevin yeah. Scott's over there, but. Uh, uh, he did have a Twitter thing. His last tweet is up, but I would want one last post, like and remember, like what, like like yo, we lost this, you know, we lost Jamie, whatever. Like I wouldn't want my, I don't know what my last picture would be, and I don't want a bad <laughs> one. So I kind of want like yo, like he died, you know, like a memorial post, like a Chadwick, he has one, and Virgil has one on his. Uh-huh. Like, this, like the that. last picture of Jamie is of him like with taco juice on. I'm about shirt. to say, yeah, that I wouldn't pic- want that. <laughs> that picture he took of him with the hamburger. <laughs> Like he was a good guy. <laughs> He's seen a burger. You know I mean? Holy shit! <laughs> so yeah, would, would, you, would you want someone to keep posting on your shit? Just nah, one thing. I think I think whatever the lasting memory is or lasting impression is good for me, even it's, if it's embarrassing. It, it might be funny, like some cool, like some people could just comment under, like, "Oh, we miss you." It's you always, know what I mean, some cool. It's always scary when uh, when somebody passes away and their story's still up, of like the last things they were doing before they passed away. Yeah, especially when it was like hours before. Right? Yeah, that's yeah, like that's some yeah. some freaky shit. Yeah, right? uh, shit, man. I mean, we have to do a rest in peace to what Tame One from Artifact. From the Artifact, yeah. I mean, Tame One, like that verse from Wrong Side of the Tracks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is like epic. When I was in the night, when I was young in the nineties, mm-hmm. the Artifacts and Wrong Side of the Tracks was like a direct representation of me and my my boys. Mm-hmm. We were doing graffiti. And we were just like, you know, running through the trains and like doing graph and it would just spoke to us. It was like I identified with that so much at the time. Yeah. And then uh rest in peace Hurricane G. And then what both of like both of them was like part of down with Red Man Camp. Mm. So he's Jersey, probably, yeah. Yeah, so he's probably taking it harder than anyone, man. Yeah. Damn. Hurricane G was in uh Tonight's Tonight. She had That like, was her, yeah, she was in that. Man, she was like one of my favorite. I like, thought she was gonna blow up, but I don't yeah. know what happened, man. Because she was like Puerto Rican rapper, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. and she was like, she, I think she was on a couple Tony Touch records. Yeah, she was. Yeah, Spanish Harlem. Mm-hmm. I think her biggest joint was she was on the um, the Puff Daddy joint, PE two thousand, where he signed oh. the Public Enemy. Yeah, one, oh, one. number one. one. Yeah, man, damn. Yo, rest in peace. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's, all these people are passing yeah, right I now. No, man. And yeah. I think the I think the same day that uh. Takeoff pass, man. Devito lost his son. Oh yeah, he drowned. His, his, his three year old son drowned, man. And I, it, didn't yeah, get mu- yeah. it didn't get much noti- like pub because it, it was the exact same day as the takeoff situation. But I just happened to see it, and I just fell for him, man. For any any parent to lose their kid, man, like it's just you know no no parent should have to see their child pass away. You know, what I'm saying yeah, it should be it should always be the other way around, man. Yeah. So I, I fell for him, man. He's only three years old. Yeah. That was sad. Rest in peace, and then uh, you know what? We also we want to thank everyone that came out to our five year anniversary event. Yes, mm-hmm. um, yeah, here in Vegas. Mm-hmm. You know, shout to everyone. You know, people flew in from Hawaii. Yeah, um, yeah, man. From LA, LA New yeah. York, from, from New York. Shout to MoMA, yeah. Marty Rock, uh, DJ City, Beat Source. Yeah, man. You know, Phenom, Daz, Green yeah. Dispensary. Yeah, a lot of Green faces. We, a lot of faces we hadn't seen in a while mm-hmm. showed up. Showed sure. up. Tina T. Shout out to her. I hadn't, yeah. we hadn't seen her yeah. shit since we had an interview. You know, it, it's weird when we have those events. I don't like. I don't get to talk to people. Mm-hmm. For some reason, I feel like I'm just floating around because I'm trying to like Host. make sure operations is good, make sure the DJs is Everything's good. Everything's good. Yeah, and then it's like sometimes I don't know. Like I, I want to do something different when we do another anniversary where we can sit down and talk to people mm-hmm. and yeah. connect a little bit more. Right. Because uh, I didn't get to do it, but maybe you guys did. But I I didn't. It was like it was so many people. I. Yeah. I felt like I, I was like jumping conversations and yeah. It was like really early, early I was night. doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Thanking like, people for coming down. Yeah, talking to see how they've been doing and going to the next person. Yeah, just like it's, it feels very Hollywood sometimes yeah. because like I'll be in the middle of a conversation and someone shows up and I'm like yo and I'm yeah. I'm giving like three groups of people different pounds yeah. mm-hmm. but I'm not really acknowledge. Like, I feel like I'm not properly acknowledging that that one yeah. person giving you yeah, my yeah. focus. Yeah. yeah, but you know I, we really appreciate everyone coming through right, our absolutely. five year anniversary. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think we're going to end it there, y'all. Peace, everyone. All right, everyone. Have a good one. Peace. If you want to watch more episodes from Road Podcast, click either links on the left or the right. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page. Get updated on new uploads throughout the week. Peace.